Um, if you look at it from a physiologic standpoint, uh, your body sort of is either feeding, which means you're eating. And when you're eating, you're taking in sort of food energy, which is calories. Yep. And your body wants to store those calories. So insulin, which is a hormone, goes up when you eat. It stores those calories. So you have to have sort of an equal period of time where your insulin is going to fall, which is the signal that your body should start using those calories that it's stored. So it's a balance there, right? It's a balance between feeding, which is storing calories and fasting, which is using the calories that you've stored. That's really all it is. And you're supposed to have this natural cycle, which is why you have a word breakfast, break your fast. Right. You're not supposed to eat all the time. If you never fast, then you're just going to be storing calories all the time, which means you're going to gain body fat because, you know, body fat is really no more or less than a store of those food calories, right? And it all depends on insulin, which is why a lot of people look at the carbohydrates because certain foods are more fattening than other foods, right? right. Um, and people say it's all about calories, but it's really not. The body doesn't run on calories. The body runs on hormones. That's what tells the body uh, sort of what to do with the calories, how much to eat, whether they should eat more or eat less. Everything in the, in the human body is run on those hormones and the fasting is a way to sort of um, adjust those hormones so that you can lose some of the body weight. And it's really a very simple concept. It's been around a very, very long time. But recently, of course, um, people had the idea that you should eat constantly yeah. to lose weight. And it's like, okay, one, that just doesn't make any sense. It's actually impossible to lose weight while you're actually eating. Right. It just doesn't work that way. It's sort of like, you know, you're going to dry off by jumping in the shower, right? It's like, that doesn't make any sense at all. You only, uh, you only lose weight when you're not eating. That's the only way you can do it. So, right. uh, but it had become very, uh, you know, sort of, oh, eat it the minute you get up, never skip breakfast. And don't stop eating until you go to bed. And that's the way to lose weight. It's like that, one that doesn't make any common sense. It doesn't make any physiologic sense. You need to have that period of fasting. And in the old days, your grandmother might say, oh, you need time to digest your food, right? That's, that's really all we're talking about. It's especially uh, important as you get older, because, you know, with menopause, perimenopause, and as people, as, as, as men get older, because there are changes as well. So, you know, with women, there's a change, but men's testosterone also tends to decline yep. over time, which makes weight loss a lot harder, actually. But um, because of the changes uh, with age, it's, it's you know, um, it's especially important to, to, to make sure that we have these periods of fasting so that we can allow our bodies to use the calories that are stored away. That's what, that's what uh, body fat is. That's yeah. what glucose is. So if you have type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, again, that's another way to allow your body to use it. Mm. And the thing is that it's a completely natural way to do it right? There's no drugs involved. They're not doing any sort of weird surgery. It's free. And it's been done for thousands of years. So if there was a problem with fasting, we would have figured it out sort of right. 2000 years ago. It's, it's, it's ridiculous to think that the human body has no capacity to use the fuel that's stored away on our bodies. Of course, if you're underweight, if you're, you know, if you're, if you have very little body fat, for example, then, then no, it's not the right thing for you. But for most of us in North America who have enough body fat and sometimes too much body fat, then it is a very good solution. Problems like if you do a diet, for example, uh, that's never been done before, right? Then, you know, say you come up with some diet of some kind of shake and stuff. Well, nobody's ever done that before. You don't know what the consequences are because you don't have the experience with it. Um, but if you follow a diet that's been around or a, you know, dietary intervention like fasting, which has been around for thousands of years, you know that literally billions of people throughout history have done it. And there just are not that many reports of problems with it, right. given the right circumstances, of course, given that you're trying to lose weight, you have to get adequate body fat and so on. If you think about how the body stores excess energy, which is calories, um, it stores it either as sugar or it stores it as body fat. If you have too much sugar, you have type two diabetes. If you have too much body fat, you have obesity. So if you have too much of this, then this natural solution is to let your body use some of the fuel that it's stored away. So burn off some of the glucose, burn off some of the body fat, and then you will get better, which is going to decrease your risk of the two, by far and away, biggest health issues of today, which is heart disease and cancer. So we know, of course, that cancer is a uh, many types, there's, there's lots of different types of cancer, but many types of cancer are obesity related. That is how they're classified. There's, I think, 14, 13 or 14 different types of cancer 
uh, that are classified as obesity associated cancers by the World Health Organization. And that includes breast cancer and colorectal cancer, which are sort of the, the, the biggest two. Uh, the biggest one actually is lung cancer, but that's mostly related to smoking. Right. You're simplifying your life because it's not something that you're doing, it's something that you're not doing, right? So it's completely opposite from a diet, which is that the, the diet tells you what foods are you going to eat? Fasting works with any diet because it doesn't have, it doesn't tell you what foods you should and shouldn't eat. It just tells you that there's a period of time that you need to set aside that you're not eating to digest your food or to use some of the food that you stored away. So whether you're vegan or paleo or carnivore or keto or whatever you want, you know, cabbage soup if you want, but it's whatever diet you want to do. So whether you eat a traditional American diet or a traditional, you know, Indian diet or a traditional Chinese diet, it's still going to be the same. And that's a huge benefit. It's also very flexible. That is, you can do it and you can not do it. You can do more of it if you want to and less of it if you don't want to. If it's on holidays, you don't want to do it, but then you do more after the holidays to make up for it. So completely flexible. And it's powerful because if you don't eat, you're going to lose weight. So people have fasted for, you know, days on end and done very well. The, the, the thing about diets is that suppose you decide you're going to be a vegan and you want to lose weight. Um, and you, but you're not losing weight. Well, you can't be more vegan than vegan, or you can't right. be more Mediterranean than Mediterranean, right. or you know whatever you are, or more paleo than paleo. Uh, there's a limit there. But with fasting, there's no limit because you can just continue to fast until you lose that weight. So you, you know that at some point you're going to lose the weight, which gets us sort of so so. There's a huge number of benefits, you know, and then there's a lot of myths that go around it, and uh, people try and tell you you shouldn't do it for certain reasons. And uh, some of these are very, um, it's funny because they're almost the exact opposite. So one of them, uh, one of the sort of persistent myths is that it's going to put you into starvation mode, which is this idea that your body is going to shut down when you don't eat. Right. And it's actually completely untrue. In fact, it's the opposite. When you don't eat, your body actually doesn't shut down. It actually ramps itself up. And the reason for this is that as your hormone insulin goes down, remember, so when you eat, insulin goes up, tells your body to store calories. When you don't eat, insulin goes down, you're going to, your body tells itself to liberate those calories. So taking, you know, instead of storing glucose and storing fat, it's going to take glucose and it's going to take fat. It's going to turn it back into blood sugar so that you have energy. The thing is that one of the hormone system that gets revved up during that time is the sympathetic nervous system, which is noradrenaline. So you're actually increasing stimulation to your body, you're going to have more energy. It's just going to come from a different source. It's not going to come from food. It's going to come from your body fat or your blood sugar, right? But you're going to have more energy because that's what your hormones are telling you to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see this uh, as you're going to get increased uh, concentration. So again, one of the myths is that, well, I have to work, I have to eat. No, you don't have to eat. You can concentrate just fine, not eating. Um, and people are just going to say they're tired, but you're going to have more energy. We see it all the time. People actually have so much energy. Sometimes they can't even sleep properly because they're so, their body's just sort of flooded with energy. And, um, if you think about it, it makes sense. If you think about Thanksgiving, you have a huge Thanksgiving meal. Do you feel all that energetic or do you just want to lie on the couch and watch TV? Right. Because yeah. that's what your body is doing. Once you've had that huge meal, you're trying to, you're trying to store it away, right? You're not trying to okay. use it. The, if you look at animals, you look at a lion who just ate, it's just sort of lying there, not very interested. Or you look at the hungry wolf who hasn't eaten. Is he lethargic and falling down? Not at all. No. He's got so much energy and he's zeroed in and focused because that's how he's mm. going to get food. So those myths that, oh, you know, you're going to go into a starvation mode is the opposite. You're, when they do a study of uh, people fasting for four days, so they looked at the amount of energy, the amount of calories that these people were burning. People say, oh, you're going to go into starvation mode, meaning your body's going to burn less calories. When you actually measure it, so you measure people at day zero, and then you give them no food for four days. Then you measure how much energy they're burning. They're, the amount of calories that they burn in a day goes up by mm -hmm. about 10%. So at, you know, at, at, before they did the fasting, they're burning 2,000 calories. As they fasted for four days, at the end of those four days, they were burning 2,200 calories per day. So mm -hmm. more calories per day, which is obviously a huge advantage if you are trying to lose body fat, right. because it means that that's where it's coming from. So the, the second idea, the second myth is that, you know, you're going to be tired, you know, you can't concentrate and that's also, also false. The third myth is that you're going to lose uh, muscle mass. And this one always seems strange to me because, um, 
you know, people talk about muscle mass and eating like there, there's this very tight correlation, um, but there's not. So it, just remember how much muscle you have depends on how much you exercise that muscle. Okay. Again, assuming that you're not malnourished and are protein deficient. If we could just eat and build muscle, hey, I'd love it, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> if you um, don't exercise, it matters very little what you eat because you're not going to gain muscle mass or muscle strength because that's, you know, the body only gets stronger when you exercise it. So you could send people up to space where they have no gravity. There's no, you know, they're, they're not exercising. They lose muscle mass extremely quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why they have to exercise in space, right? It's not what they ate. Like, it's great if I could just eat more and gain muscle. And the opposite is also true. If you don't eat, your body doesn't automatically lose muscle because, you know, there's this idea that your body is just so incredibly stupid that your body is going to store energy as glucose and fat. And when you need it, the minute you need it, you're going to burn muscle. Right. Like, how does that even work? Why, why, why would you think the human body is so incredibly stupid that we became the dominant species of this planet? Right. <laughs> like, wouldn't you, like, why would you do that? It's, it's like storing firewood for the winter. And then as soon as it gets cold, you chop up your sofa and throw it in the fire. Why would you do that? You know, protein muscle is functional tissue. It's not a store of energy, right? So when you need a store of energy, you go into your stores of energy, which is glucose and body fat you know, one, one that often gets people is the hunger because you will get hungry during fasting. That is unavoidable. What people always worry about is that they'll get so hungry that they won't be able to control themselves. And for most people, it's actually doesn't work that way. For most people, when you miss a meal, your hunger will go up. And then if you don't eat, it'll just go back down. So when they measure, um, you know, people over 24 hours who haven't eaten, they measure their ghrelin, which ghrelin. is a, a hormone hunger that hormone. goes up. Yes, yeah. a hunger hormone. So it goes up, you're more hungry. Uh, what happens is that, you know, at 12 o'clock, you miss your meal, you're hungry. Yeah. At four o'clock, your hunger level, your ghrelin levels are actually the same as if you ate. It goes right back to baseline. So what happened? Well, your body took the energy from your stores. It took it from your body fat and you ate lunch from your body fat. You just didn't take it from the food, but your body has essentially fed itself on its body fat. Mm -hmm. So therefore you're no longer hungry. And that's basically all that happened. So if you can simply ignore it for, you know, 90 minutes or so, that wave of hunger is just going to pass. Your body will feed itself. And most of it is also conditioning. So most of the hunger is actually just conditioning. That is, you think you're, you're, you've got a habit of eating a certain way. And when you don't, then you're going to be hungry for a lot of people. Uh, and you see that because you see these peaks in ghrelin exactly at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if you simply train yourself to eat two meals a day, and for years I did this because I skipped breakfast, mostly because I just was too tired. and I wanted to sleep. So I didn't want to get up and make breakfast. Right. So I just ate lunch and dinner. I don't get hungry in the morning very often anymore because I'm just not used to it, right? Yeah, you're so conditioning if, yourself. Yes, yeah, it's just a conditioned response. So hunger is very often a conditioned response. So if you simply get used to it, then all of a sudden you don't have to fight yourself to lose weight because your habits are just going to lead you naturally to this. So that's the, that's the beauty of something like fasting because as soon as you establish that habit, it's easy because it doesn't take any willpower or thought. It's just something that you naturally fall into, as opposed to sort of diets where you're constantly thinking about, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I eat this? No, this you shouldn't eat. So, you know, there's a lot of advantages there. A lot of the myths turn out to be false. In fact, mostly the, most of the myths are the exact opposite. So people say, oh, you can't concentrate. You know, your concentration actually is shown to be better. It's like, oh, you're going to go into starvation mode, meaning that your body will burn less energy. No, it actually burns more energy. So all of these myths are just uh, sort of uh, blown away by the actual science of it which nobody had bothered to look at. So when I started talking about this in sort of uh, 10 years ago, eight years ago, almost, uh, all the science was there already. But the perception, which is that this fasting is bad for you, fasting is dangerous, fasting is going to cause all these things. Uh, it was almost all the exact opposite of what was actually true. And it just meant getting the knowledge out there and, and people could see it for themselves. Hey, here's an intervention that's free. 
that's available that has all these benefits and most yeah. of the myths are simply untrue. So what's stopping us from doing it? And the answer is nothing. It's just habits. We want to change our habits. Yeah, so there's really only two sort of variables that fast differ. One is the length of the fast. So uh, you can do it for 12 hours or you can do it for 16 hours or you can do it for 24 hours or you can do it for 24 days if you feel like it, right? So there, it, the body goes through certain stages. I, I did uh, do a whole video on this uh, on YouTube called the five stages of intermittent fasting. Uh, and, and, and during those stages, you sort of go through different um, phases so that at one point you're burning more glucose and then you get into the stage of uh, sort of gluconeogenesis where you are burning some protein, not necessarily muscle, but protein. And that's important because of this whole idea of autophagy and how it's actually considered to be highly beneficial. Um, and then you get into sort of fat burning. So um, depending on what your specific goal is, you may do more shorter or longer fast. So you get into this range sort of at the beginning where you start uh, burning glucose mostly, then you get into this sort of autophagy 24 to 36 hours. And then after that, you get into mostly fat oxidation, which means if you're looking for that, you can use longer fast for uh, losing body fat. Uh, it gets into this sort of protein sparing sort of fat burning mode, because again, your body wants to change most of its energy requirements to body fat. So um, the length of the fast is one variable. And the other thing to think about for fast length is how you're going to implement that into a regular day. Because if you do um, long fast, I'll tell you that they're not easy to fit into a regular daily schedule. <laughs> yeah, so if you're going more than 24 hours, so if you're doing say a three day fast, it's not all that easy to fit it in because a lot of people have dinner with family or they have plans yeah. to go out and socialize. And socialization is often at dinner time, right? Or after meals or after drinks or whatever. And the idea is not to uh, be a hermit and, you know, lock yourself away because that's very unhealthy as well, you know. So you want to sort of fit the fasting into your lifestyle, not fit your lifestyle into fasting. So that's why a lot of the shorter fasts are so much easier to do because they fit into the regular day so much easier. So 16-8, for example. So the shorter you do a fast, generally, the more frequently you're going to do it. So a 16 hour fast is just uh, eating in eight hours of the day. And so you're you know, allowing yourself 16 hours to, to, to use that. Um, so you might eat from say 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that fits very easily into a normal working schedule. It still allows you to have sort of dinner with your family every night, go out for dinner with friends on the weekends and all that kind of thing. Um, because most of the time people don't care if you eat breakfast or not. They're not expecting you there. And, you know, because remember when social. you eat. Yeah. yeah, there's, there's very little social aspect to it. And uh, as opposed to dinner, which is a, you know, uh, you know, meals are not just for sustenance, they're also a time for us to connect with others and sit Absolutely. down and spend time, right? So that's why you have to all take that into consideration. So a 16 8 schedule or a one meal a day schedule works extremely well with that. So one meal a day is where you might eat, say, dinner every, you know, today to dinner the next day, which is about a 24 hour fast. So those are the most popular because they, so 16, eight and one meal a day or OMAD, those are the two most popular schedules because they fit into a normal day without too much uh, sort of adjusting of other things. Um, and you don't have to, if you're doing one meal a day, it's not that you have to do it every day. You might do it a couple of times a week, for example do recommend changing it up occasionally. So there's two things. One is that it's good to establish a pattern first because by establishing the pattern, you build the habit, which then makes it easy. So then you no longer have to think about it. So for example, skipping snack, cutting out snacks and skipping breakfast is an easy one because it's uh, once you right. build that into the habit, you no longer have to think about it worry about it. You don't have to think, am I eating breakfast today? Am I not eating breakfast? You, you just don't because that's just the way you do. And it makes it easy because the hunger typically just sort of goes away as well because your body is used to the fact that you're not eating at, you know, nine o'clock in the morning or whatever. Right. So you want to first establish the baseline habit. Then if you get into a plateau, so if you're doing well, then there's no reason to switch. If you hit a plateau, which a lot of people do, that's when you want to start changing it up and go a little longer, go a little stricter, change it up in terms of what you're doing to sort of shake your body up a little bit. Because if you get into this sort of steady state where you're, you're, uh, you did lose some weight, it did well, but now it's sort of flatlined, 
that's when you want to change it up every so often. And so you keep your baseline, but then every so often you throw in some extra stuff so that you shake it up. And it's, it's, it's no different than say uh, exercise where you would do a high intensity workout. For example, if you're sort of flatlined in terms of your progress, you might start doing some sort of uh, interval sprints or whatever like that. Right. I think it's, I think it's doable. It all depends on what your goals are and right. how far along you are. So if you, if you have right. severe health issues, well, I wouldn't recommend it at first, but you know, if you're in a place that's good and you're happy with where you are and you want to say, do a cheat day or whatever, then yeah, it's absolutely because that's what's going to keep you sort of in tune with the whole program. And remember fasting is flexible. That is, you don't have to do it every single day, exactly the same. You could do none at all on Sunday and then do maybe a bit more on Monday so that you don't like, you know, the thing about um, holidays and these sort of cheat, cheat periods, like holidays, you know, Christmas time, that kind of thing, is that uh, most people, <laughs> when you think about it, don't make up for it. So, so if you say, say you eat a certain right. amount and then you have a period, say Christmas, because that's where traditionally you see the most weight gain. So you, you eat a lot, like way too much and not the right foods, right? A lot of cookies right. and ice cream and desserts. So that's fine. So you're eating, 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 then you eat a lot. Well, then you go, okay, now it's January 2nd. So I'm going to go back to eating regularly. Well, you never made up for the, right. <laughs> that period of a month where you ate too much. Like you have to have a period of a month where you're eating a lot less in order to balance. You can't just go back to your usual. So again, same thing with the cheat days. If you say, okay, well, yeah, and, and I'm totally fine with it. Say you say you have a day. I don't want to think about it where it's a day. I'm just not going to think about, I'm going to eat what I feel like eating and that's it. That's fine. But if you're going to eat more on that day and, and the wrong foods, then you should have another day that makes up for it because you can't have a positive day, right? Say you're at zero, 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 and then you're, you're at positive, 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 and then you go back to zero, zero, zero. Well, where was your, all the, your negatives that canceled out your positive? You never had those, right?